Jesus.
As we anticipate the Lord's coming, we are busy telling all those around us that Jesus Christ loves them. In fact, uh, next week we're having a, a food drive during all of the weekend services so we can be a blessing to members of our church family. I uh, understand yesterday we had a great uh, number of women who came for training. Uh, a matter of prayer, this week uh, we will begin a call center right here at Central where we will be calling women who advertise as escorts, offering them hope in Jesus Christ. As we do that, we'll find some of them are victims of human trafficking. We have a home, a safe place here we're partnering with to send those ladies to for restoration. So we're reaching out to our city and this country. And of course, around the world, we heard from several of our missionaries this week, uh, got some beautiful pictures of children in the West Bank at the school you support in Abood, and they thank you for your blessings there. I talked with Jean Parks, a member of our congregation who for the past many years is in Panama, in cities and in, in rural places, uh, assisting pastors and training, discipling and evangelizing people there. Uh, also, uh, Pastor Bishnu from Nepal, Diane Smith from our congregation is there assisting him and uh, you support an orphanage there. So today uh, is one of those rare Sundays we have two offerings. I'll invite the ushers to come. The first offering is our regular tithes and offering, but uh, when they come for the second time, it's our quarterly missions offering. And the gifts that you give today will go to ministries such as those that, that we spoke about earlier. So um, make your check to Central Church and you can just note missions on that offering. So, Lord, we pray now that you would bless these givers, bless the gifts, and everyone who receives them, may they be used for the glory of God in these last days. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated.
At the mention of your name, every knee will bow, tongue proclaim, Jesus, Jesus, you are Savior, you are Lord, and you are God. Everybody say. Jesus, Jesus Ooh, yeah. at the mention of your name, mention of your name. Will bow, will oh, 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 Jesus. Jesus, sweet Jesus, Jesus, you are saved.
Praise God. Praise God. Praise God forever. May his name be praised throughout eternity. God is faithful. And he's good. And the Lord is here this morning. Jesus said, if just two or three of you get together in my name, I'm in the middle of you. I'm going to give you a short word this morning and then this Jesus who was in the middle of us. Whether it's the middle of that group or the middle of two or three of you, he's here. Wherever Jesus is, something's going to happen. Wherever Jesus is, something wonderful and life-changing is going to take place. I don't talk much about miracles and signs and wonders. I would just prefer Jesus do them. But in my heart, I believe the Lord wants to prove to somebody today who feels distant from Him that He has not moved one inch. So, Father, in the name of Him who is above all, in the mighty and powerful name of a risen Jesus who holds us in the palm of his hand and loves us with an everlasting love, we come to you today. And although you do not need an invitation, I invite you. Walk up and down the aisles of this church, in and out of these pews. When people speak your name may they feel the warm embrace and the assurance that you are God I'll take anything you have today Lord because you only have good lined up for us don't really know what to ask for that's why I'm so glad this morning that you already know what we have need of before we ask. And so I'm thanking you now that when people walk out of this building, there will be a boldness in their spirit and renewed faith in their hearts that God is in control and God is good. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's don't say amen. Let's just continue. Smile at somebody on the way down. Let me give you what the Lord's given me this morning. Do you know what your name is? I found out what my name is. And oddly enough, we all have the same name. Now, I've spent my whole life trying to figure out why Lawrence and Maddie Livingston named me Loran. Never have liked it. <laughs> Got tired of explaining it or spelling it or correcting it. So I just let people call me whatever. I've got nicknames. Sandra's got a short nickname for me. My family have had nicknames. I had nicknames in school. Bottom line is I just always said when somebody says, what's your name, Loran? But I found something yesterday. So I want to ask you if you know what your name is. 
I happened to turn over to the 43rd chapter of Isaiah. And here's what God says to a people who had failed him. He spent about the first 40 chapters correcting them. And now he is reassuring them. They had wandered and sinned and had, well, truly done despicable things. And no matter how arrogant or rebellious they were, this relentless God just wouldn't let go. So here's what he says to them. But now. Can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? Well, move up closer. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. But now, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. That's your name. Mine. Whose? His. He says, I'm calling all my children mine. My possession, my belongings, my family, mine. Nobody can take us from him. Nobody can reverse his decision to name us mine. But I think there's a process here. The Lord says, I created you. That means I made you what you are. Then he says, I formed you. I made you who you are. And I have redeemed you. Do you know in the scriptures that when God redeems, it is never unredeemable? Never. Nobody can reverse the work of God. Once the work starts, it concludes. Hear me when I tell you, O oh Jacob, O oh Israel, O oh church, every one of us today has fallen short of the glory of God. There's not one of us today who's been obedient all week long. God says, I understand all that, mine, but I created you. I formed you. I redeemed you with blood, irreversibly, eternally, and forever. You are mine. Next verse. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. You're mine. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. You're mine. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. I felt the Lord gave me a particular word, a little short word last Tuesday for somebody in the staff meeting. And it went something like this. Do not let or do not confuse God's silence with God's separation. Because sometimes God just doesn't talk. He just stands there. His presence is there. 
And sometimes when we can't get a word, can't find a scripture, can't feel an assurance, we feel separated. We sense distance from God. But God's silence is not separation. There will always be dark nights of the soul when you don't know where God is. That's why you need to know your name. Because if you're his, it doesn't matter how long he isn't speaking. You're still his. And he's doing a work. And indescribably deep, wonderful, powerful work in you. He's clutching you. So I say again, when you go through times when you can't feel God, and a lot of, let's just, let's just be honest, many times we come to church hoping we can get it, feel it, reestablish it. You don't have to do that because you're His. You may come to church and say, I tell you, I, I didn't feel a thing today. That's all right. You're his. This morning, I've asked uh, the pastors, council members, to let's just let Jesus be Jesus for a little while this morning. How many sermons do you think you've heard in your life? Probably way too many. You can't even process them. I think there comes a time in a church like this when after we have enjoyed music and fellowship, uh, sometimes we equate that with having been to church. And Jesus never really gets a chance to stand in our midst and say, mine, you're mine, don't worry about it. Don't ever be afraid. There are two things in a Christian's life you ought not to ever have to suffer, fear and guilt. You're guilty of nothing because he paid the price. He took your sins away. The only thing that stood between you and him was your sin, and your sins have been washed away and forgotten. Hallelujah. Don't ever let your past keep you from remembering who you are. You are his. And don't let fear rise up in your heart this morning. Don't anticipate tomorrow enjoy right now because he is here hallelujah I'm going to ask those uh, to come on up who have been called and designated everybody here today has a need do I get an amen, amen. there isn't one exception and I don't care what it is he already knows about it. He's already fixed it. Can you say this with me? Mine. My name is mine. I'm mine Livingston. Mine Macaluso. Mine Jones. Mine Harris. Mine. We're not going to try to make something happen. I'm going to ask you when you come down, listen very carefully. The elders and pastors are going, are you listening? They're just going to touch you with oil. They're not going to pray for you. You're going to go back to your seat, and then we're going to pray. We also have a little cloth. You can call it a prayer cloth if you want. And you're going to just lay your hand in on it with these and agree. Just no prayer, just agree. Then you take that cloth back with you. And you remember that you are God's. And what you're doing this morning is an act of faith. You're saying, can't feel you, but I know you're here. 
Don't understand what's going on, but I know you're God. You created me. You formed me. You redeemed me. I'm yours. And everything is going to work out. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? I'm going to act. We have people stationed on the steps, on the stage down here. And they're going to start anointing you. So as the Holy Spirit leads, we're not in a hurry. You just come down. And in so doing, say, here I am, Lord. I am yours. formed my heart before even time began my life was in his hand he knows my name he knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls and hears me when I call. He knows my name. He knows my I had a father, he calls me his own, he'll never leave me, no matter where I go. He 
sees each tear that falls and hears me when I call. And hears me when I call, and hears me when I call, and hears me when I call. Oh.
Jesus, we don't even know how to pray. You have to help us even pray. We don't know what we need. We don't know who we are. That's why we humble ourselves today. Because if we have you, everything else will be taken care of. I guess, Lord, we need to repent of asking for so many specific things when it's really you that can only satisfy us. You're really the answer we're looking for. I come to you today, Lord, and I'm leading a prayer for all these people that you bought with blood. I'm, I stand here and lead them in prayer. And I ask you, Lord, for help. We're not as strong as we thought we were. We're not as faithful as we thought we were. We're way too self-sufficient. We're hungry and don't realize what we need to eat. We're thirsty and drink the wrong things. But you, Lord, have called us by your name. There are people here today not living right, but their hearts really are in the right place. There are young men and women who know they've wandered away, but today you saw fit to urge them to come to church so that they could hear one more time they were created they were formed they were redeemed they do have a name and I pray that they will repent before you and draw close to you this day and Lord I pray for the marriages in this church there are some who feel that it's just over, but it isn't. It's never over with you, Lord. There is nothing you cannot do. You can put things back that were taken away. You can make people love each other again. You can help us to refocus our eyes on what really counts in this life. Holy Spirit, as Jesus walked up and down the aisles of this church, let him love her again. Let her love him again. There are people who are feeling pain in their body right now. God, I know that you are able to heal. I pray today, Lord, that our lives will once again be about simple faith in Jesus. Let us live for your glory. Let us hate sin and love righteousness. I thank you for this day. I thank you for every trial. I thank you for every burden. I thank you for every tragedy. I thank you for every fight and every temptation because you have used all these things to help us to be reminded that Jesus alone, alone is all we need. 
I pray blessings on this congregation. We know these little cloths don't hold any power, oh Lord, but it's a symbol. It just says, we remember that today we heard once again, we're yours. Yours forever. We're yours when we fail. We're yours when we succeed. We're yours when we pray, and we're yours when we don't. We're yours. I don't know why I'm so moved now, Lord. This sex trafficking thing tears my spirit all to pieces. To think that there are human beings, innocent human beings in this world that are being used like property, and scarred and killed. Dear God, deliver them. Help us to do our part to deliver them. And to think that all over this town there are people that are hungry. Help us to feed them. Don't let us lose our light. Don't let us put it under a bushel. Don't let us forget who we are. We are yours. And you raised up your people to be a burning and a shining light in the darkness. So Lord, we should expect fiery darts from the enemy and trouble on every hand. But you said, greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. I thank you for this morning. I thank you for your faithfulness. And I thank you that my name means I'm yours. Amen. Let's stand and sing what David's playing.
What is your name? Hallelujah. To think that the Almighty God, the Lord of glory, the creator of all things, the sovereign and uncontested power of this universe calls me his. Hallelujah. You can walk out of here today in victory because that's exactly what you have. Now thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Walk in it. You might even want to take something to write mine on this cloth. Stick it somewhere. And ever so often take it out and remember. That's my name. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen.